Welcome to another session of G-Connect today. We are live from the G-Consulting -Con International Services Studio. And uh, as usual, we'll be having a bumper package for you today to look at all the issues that have, you know, transversed um, our economy, our politics, our security, our judiciary, and every issue of utmost importance to you and to Nigerians in general. Um, as you may know, we have the August guest in the studio today. Of course, let me take this opportunity to say happy new month of August to you, our uh, esteemed viewers and followers on social media channels. We have the um, agricultural and entrepreneurial juggernaut, the group managing director of G Consulting International Services, Mr. Godfrey Ajayisone. Of course, um, also on set is uh, Osai Lume, technical director of so many uh, conglomerates. Uh, today is going to be special. Nigeria is now a drama uh, with different events happening per hour per second. So it's, Nigeria is such a very interesting country to, to follow now because you wake up and you can, cannot predict what will happen. Yes. You wake up and uh, news hitting you from left, right, right and center. center. Uh, I wonder if there is no social media, how will the traditional media, how would they have been able cope. to cope? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because now news no, is no, on. Not just even the, tra the, the traditional media. I mean, Nigerians. Yeah. How will have been coping with this so much information so much news that are happening all around us yeah we're in the era of uh, information overload so mm. some people will just tell you man they have to just switch off yes. because if you don't switch off uh, your blood pressure may as well you know be on the rise or on the increase because mm. again the news are happening that most majority of them are on the negative side yes dollar going or bandit attacking uh, you know i mean you travel around nigeria now with your heart in your mouth mm. So that's where we found ourselves, and uh, I mean, I know people who have told me that, look, we will, we will not monitor the news again. Yes, yes. <laughs> so many persons across the globe, and Nigeria in particular, many persons are beginning to learn how to tune off from the news. Uh, because, um, you know, particularly those that uh, have health, you know, conditions, um, many doctors are beginning to advise that uh, you listen less to, to the news because uh, all that is coming up. Um, it's not quite uh, helpful, you know, healthy as it were, uh, and helpful to, to, to those of them that are suffering one challenge or the other health-wise. Uh, so, but I would like us to start with uh, the, a little good news, uh, so to speak. One of our athletes uh, won the, or uh, set a record rather, well, for, uh, I think, 100 meter race. Uh, yes, 100 meter hodo yes. uh, race. Uh, that's talking about Toby Amusa. Amusa, yes. Okay, so uh, that was a very, very cherry news. Mm. Uh, for a long time, our uh, sport has been on the decline. So from nowhere, uh, Toby came and uh, put a, a bit of um, life in uh, the whole thing. You know, beyond winning that race, I mean, she was able to set a, a record. world record that mm. is unprecedented. Yes. That is still very, very controversial today. You know, it, it's unbelievable how she was able to. But again, looking at that race and looking at the way uh, she was able to, you know, take off and be able to end up with a margin mm. that is unprecedented in, in world athletics. I think it deserves commendation. Yes. I mean, that's uh, what people see. Nigeria has a way of putting smile in our faces. Uh, in, uh, despite what we are passing through, mm. people will see, man, Nigeria is still the happiest. Happiest with planet. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, we will still put that under debate if yeah. we are still the happiest people, you know, in uh, this, in in these, these uh, circumstances. circumstances. You know, but like I was trying to point out, um, you know, many persons have come to identify with uh, the Amusam's uh, victory. Uh, we have all the presidential candidates, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, running ahead of themselves. And uh, even the artist, uh, mm -hmm. Tiwa Savage, had to uh, speak directly to her. Yes. A lot of people are speaking. She has suddenly become a yeah. superstar. <laughs> because in the midst of the darkness, mm. you know, she, she just brought out, you know, yeah. that light. Yeah. You know, for, for us as a people, because globally, 
um, I think uh, it has become Nigeria has become like the the center of all things bad that you can think of. <laughs> you know, from mm -hmm. from business scams to uh, even romance scams. <laughs> you know, to fraud in government. Then now to banditry and kidnapping, and you know, so yeah. it's uh, it's something that uh, we all should uh, be thankful to God for giving us somebody like that yeah, at this yeah. time. So the, the Commonwealth is, is, uh, is on right, and right now. So what that means is that uh, once it's able to rep replicate that again, then people will now see it as something that is not a fluke. Mm. But I think uh, if you look at her um, history, she's been a champion. And my prayer for her is that uh, when, she, when it gets to Olympic, mm. let her be able to uh, replicate this uh, feat. Uh, she needs to be celebrated and we need to celebrate her. So congratulations to Amusa and uh, Team Nigeria yeah. out there. Keep doing us proud. And uh, it's a prayer for you that uh, the strength you need will be given unto you. So let's move into some of the critical topics today to, of course, as usual in this uh, program, we don't just look at the issues. Uh, we try to prefer solutions uh, and because we know that uh, those that are in government currently or those that are preparing to come to government are listening and so we want to utilize the opportunity we have on the platform to share ideas with them uh, even you that are, are, are viewing us as a ceo um, as you have seen in this program from time to time we are brought in experienced and versatile ceos to share their experiences uh, so that you can also uh, have some takeaways you can apply in your business. So we're going to start from um, the issue of dollar. <laughs> you know, dollar rate as of today is out of the roof. <laughs> Unprecedented, high, unexplainable, mm. disastrous. I mean, it's something that cannot, is unimaginable. Uh, look at where this administration took off from. And look at where the dollar is today. I mean, virtually it was is a free fall. That's what the media describe it as. Nigeria, I mean, the naira had a free fall against the mm. dollar, seven hundred and ten, and still rising. Okay, so everything will be aff affected. If we take aviation industry for example, mm. everything about aviation is dollarized. Talking about the maintenance, the maintenance talking the about the, the, the fear, talking about everything. So right now, with dollar that rate, I mean, people are just the, at the mercy of what will happen next. Okay, because again, uh, flights in those days, averagely, if you have 18,000, 25,000, you can afford to, to do a flight. But now, I tell you, averagely, flight is going for 80, 100,000. Single, single uh, trip. Yeah, single trip. So I don't know how we're going to be able to cope with that. And plus, on top of all this one, let me speak the Nigerian uh, proper English now. Mm. You know, you cannot travel by road. Yeah, you, you cannot, travel, you cannot by travel by road, and you cannot travel by air because you cannot even afford it. So just imagine. Uh, our children have left Ukraine, mm. came back to Nigeria as a result of the war between Ukraine and uh, and Russia. Mm. Uh, instead of us to be taking advantage of of that to be able to catapult our economy to the next level, now you cannot even afford to keep these children in school again. Our Swiss on strike. Dollar is seven hundred and ten. Flight is eighty thousand. Man, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's an um, unimaginable um, few, few months or few years back. Uh, but I, I really want us to drill down to the impact of the uh, dollar rising or free fall of the Naira on businesses. How can businesses hedge against this kind of uh, one ton uh, fall of the Naira? Well, it's difficult. Uh, and I knew at the beginning of the year, some people started saving in dollars. Mm. Uh, so for those people, it's uhuru for them today. Yes. Uh, because again, let's assume you you save, let's say, five million. Okay. As at the time, the rate was around uh, four hundred something. 
then you know you'll have been able to get gain a lot of uh, mileage with the increase of course it's not on the positive side because again you are still going to the same market to make uh, purchases okay so what is behind this uh, dollar uh, rise is the fact that we are not a productive economy mm. we are not producing energy everything and majority of everything that we use in nigeria is all imported it started by the rise in uh, in uh, ago uh, that was talking about uh, the diesel yeah that was where all these things happened the aviation fuel uh, went up the diesel which is industry uh, base that's most of the manufacturing uh, uh, components yeah. that's what they use mm. that's that's where it all uh, started from and today i mean the central bank of nigeria has lost control over uh, what they need to do i think that is where my pain is at the moment because uh, we know that uh, for a long time now we have been crying okay nigeria is not a productive uh, nation we are not producing uh, more than we we eat or more than we we import um, that has been the story even when we have the dollar at 107 that is before the advent of this administration uh, we're having a dollar at 107 and uh, today it's like they just rearranged the numbers <laughs> 107 and 9701 <laughs> you know so um, we we have always you know know that we are not producing but the admi uh, previous administrations were able to manage, you know, this uh, dollar rate and uh, exchange rate and all that, you know, to to maintain it at that, yeah, you know, rate, yeah. at that rate. Mm. Has changed because most of the allegations is that there is so much round tripping that is happening currently, you know, and this has put the Central Bank of Nigeria at the spotlight. Yeah, that, the, the, the entire thing boils down to the demand for dollars. The Central Bank not being able to meet up. Okay, I remember during the primaries, uh, some of the aspirants were accused of spending dollars. Yes. Okay, I was, I, we were told that a certain aspirant was giving out as much as 20,000, 25,000, dollar to one person and for an economy that is not productive so where was where were those dollar sourced from so the dollar became scarce and of course cbn stopped the the bureau the change and people have always argued on the fact that look why will you have two uh, exchange uh, markets mm. in, a, in an in econo country. In the economy you have a parallel market so the moment one side is deprived it affects the other side uh, almost automatically so we must get to a point where if we have to say okay uh, let cbn not even do anything let's uh, let there be a single market as it's done in other parts of, of of the world mm. so but when you try to regulate you bring out uh, i was looking uh, i was look, uh, listening to a particular uh, form of analyst who was saying that look when you when cbn brings out money and is is not you are not paying the right price for that dollar. There is another form of subsidy mm. that is also now being introduced into in, the market. Into the foreign exchange. Uh, so the moment you have subsidy, round trip comes in, and you know most of our big men, that's how they made the money, because again they have the muscles to be able to go to CBN to demand for this uh, for us in the name of the fact that they want to manufacture. Mm. And when they eventually get those dollar, they don't manufacture any jack because you don't see any of those things in the market that they claim that they are they are they are manufacturing. Today, most of the plants run on diesel, and diesel have moved from 200 naira per litre to, to, to about 800 naira per litre. So all these are triggers for, uh, then inflation is not also a happy matter. Worldwide now, the inflation is on the, on the, on the rise. Uh, so all these things are, you need real economies now to be able to come down to, to be able to tell you what to do. Yeah. Oh, you, you know, but yes, I agree with you totally that you need a, a, an economist, a good economist at that, to tell you what to do. But I think from hindsight, you know, looking at it um, at a very basic level, we have tried to identify some of these key problems. Look, okay, number one, we are not producing, we are not a productive nation. What needs to be done for us to become a productive nation? Is it a rocket science? I will know. Yeah. We have said, <laughs> even if it's a rocket science, we are rocket scientists. Yeah. So, what can we do to I, I mean, a productive I mean, for you to be productive, you know, two sectors that must work. Mm. The agri-sector, 
okay the agri sector must be working because again most of the raw materials that you require mm. is gotten from the agricultural sector yes then of course we have the steel that is also now having issues because without the steel there is no way you can industrialize mm -hmm. and again there is nobody who is going to you know i mean in those days uh, japan when america was highly industrialized and japan after the the, the world war had to steal technology mm -hmm. okay so uh, for you to actually uh, do technology, you need a bit of steel. Because again, if you have to do the tractors, if you want to do the machines, then your steel base must be working, must be working properly. Mm. So all these things, that's why I said, look, you need somebody who understands the dynamics of all these things. There are things that you must deliberately and desperately plan to say, okay, I mean, looking at the agri sector, very simple, rains are falling now. You just need three months to produce all the arable crops, mm. talking about all the grains. So if you're able to mobilize everybody to go back to land, okay, and you now have you producing all the grains that will require only three to four months for you to produce, then you have a good problem in your hands, which is to say that you have bumper harvest. Mm. So now, having that, the next challenge is how do you transform? How do you add value? That's where the issue of machinery comes. So why can't you now talk to China? China has huge population, and China can never import, uh, I mean, export food to any part of the world. Rather, they have machinery. So why don't you do a kind of trade by battle with them to say, look, uh, give us machinery, we'll give you food. Okay? So when you have that kind of handshake with, with a place like China, then you can seem to be trying to balance the trade between uh, China and Nigeria. And with that, economy will, will now start uh, picking up. Today, China is looking up to Brazil. Mm. China is looking up to, to other people who can give them uh, traceable, uh, high-quality food. Because again, the, your system of production also now matters. Because the world is now also moving through organic food. Yes. But we are still looking at food that we produce with inorganic material mm -hmm. that has cancerous effects on people and at the people. end of the day. Now, you, you, you paid more attention to China. And that reminds me, before we come back to... And of course, that is also part of all the the issues we are trying to identify now as um, the cause of Nigeria not being a productive nation. Not too long ago, because if you look into the international uh, arena, I don't really see, you know, where Nigeria is having a very formidable handshake with other countries in terms of uh, socioeconomic development. Um, now, some time ago, sometimes ago, I think it was this administration that mooted and and uh, mooted the idea and uh, actually signed off an agreement with China for currency swap. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, where is that, you know, <laughs> uh, agreement? It has, as it has died a natural death. You remember when uh, Goodluck was the president, mm. he mobilized a chunk of the executive. Yes, business executive. Uh, to, to land in China. Okay. So, when Wari also came, he did the same thing. They mobilized. You remember that time, a uh, high number of people went to China, mm. you know, they started talking about uh, how to do a currency swap. I mean, when you do a currency swap, you should also talk about commodity swap. Okay. You, should you should also talk about technology swap so, at the end of the day. So, if you are... Which are all part of the value chain. <laughs> so, if you understand all those dynamics, because again, uh, people went there to start, go and start looking at the beautiful city of Beijing, rather than talking about real things the, uh, to be done. And China is open. If you are proactive, they are open to, to be able to have that handshake with you. Today, if you go to, despite the insecurity, if you go across the villages, you have China people producing food mm. across a, a different uh, location. So, so currency swap should go along with technology swap it should go along with commodity swap because again the reason why uh, we don't we don't have um, uh, market destruction mm. is that our local uh, local farmers are still able to you know despite all the challenges that they're having are still able to go to go and produce something that's why you can see how food to, to eat today uh, economy that are highly dependent on on um, on uh, on, on Russia and uh, Ukraine. Ukraine, they are having, they are even Europe, okay? You're talking about gas uh, supply, mm. you're talking about wheat supply. You know, these two major countries are, but again, in Nigeria, we have a lot of alternatives to all these things. <laughs> talking about uh, uh, rice, okay? Today, uh, we're producing rice in large quantities, even mm. though the price of rice. And let me also uh, warn the viewers today. The price of rice 
is going to get up to 50,000 wow. before December. So if you, you have, need to stock up, <laughs> if you have little resources, now, <laughs> I would advise you to <laughs> to quickly go and buy because again, uh, from eighteen thousand, now foreign rice about thirty five thousand, mm. local rice around uh, twenty seven thousand. Uh, so and again, by the time by the time we talk about the 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 the, the role of the terrorism, mm. the ro ro role of banditry, yes. and what is going to have on us at the end of the day. Mm. I think at this, at this point in time, maybe you look at... Yeah, uh, before we come to that, uh, I, I, because this issue of this dollar, you know, is all about Nigeria. Yeah. Okay? We can't... You know, because I try to look around, okay, what is the closest example that we can see, you know, in terms of this trajectory that we are in, because life is all about projections yeah it's all about planning budgeting if you don't do that then you run the risk of failing okay so how do we plan with this kind of uh scenario i remember you know because you just made a, proje a projection now a prediction that rice is going to rise up to fifty thousand before december sometime late last year early last year a friend of mine was telling me that he wants to go into this forex business uh foreign exchange business he, he wants to buy some dollars and all that and the uh, last two years and i told him i said well i because i was having confidence in the government that they were actually doing something okay so i told him that well i i wouldn't advise except if you have enough money <laughs> you know but mm. for you to use the little resources you have now and go and put it into the dollar and leave it there you know, you can't really determine what the exchange rate will be, whether it's going to be in your favor and all that. But it has turned out to be a very wise yeah. uh, decision. So, Obi was able to... <laughs> yes, he, he, he didn't take my advice. <laughs> he, he went ahead to... Uh, make, uh, make the purchases. Make the purchases. But like I told him mm. also, you, if you're not having enough money, mm, it yeah. will make no meaning. Yeah, that's what some people say that look, when you are, you don't put all your egg in one basket. Yeah. Uh, if you have quite a number, I mean, for the people doing cryptocurrency mm. and other form of um, currency, you don't put all your all your funds. All your funds. Uh, so you must look at um, uh, a certain. Especially when you don't have much of disposable funds. Yeah. You know. So, so, so at the end of the day, he actually bought, but very few. So you discover the profit was not as significant yes, as so. it should have yeah. been but yeah. it was a wise calculation on his yeah. part yeah. and and that is to the point that you are making now that rice is also going to um have that kind of uh, massive increase between now and december so how should businesses now um you know in this era what should be their projection uh, how how do you you know plan your business uh, yeah, well, into the future. Well, what I can tell you is that whatever goes up <laughs> must come down. Uh, no, does not come down. Okay, right? does not come down. Because the only example we have, I have to point that out, is Zimbabwe. <laughs> yeah, Zimbabwe, Angola, and mm. incidentally, these are oil, oil pro yeah, oil producing country. Again, uh, is, um, Angola is also facing the same uh, uh, problem that we are facing mm. here uh, in Nigeria. Okay, and again, uh, it's inevitable now that the the, the price of um, fear will also will also grow. Right. So, what do you do? Uh, again, you must produce what you eat mm. and eat what you produce. So, we, you must try to keep it local, local content. Uh, that's what will probably uh, help you. But again, the machinery that we use in adding value are all uh, imported. Imported. So that's a bit of um, uh, challenge for us. But again, uh, maybe we we'll wait for God's intervention. <laughs> God is intervening. Every day. So as we wrap up on this topic uh, of the dollar, I think the message and the lesson for the CEOs this uh, this on this edition is that um, think more of internal. Uh, think local. Um, Yes, and add global. So what I always tell people when it comes to this kind of scenario, if you import, mm. turn to an exporter now. Yes. So if you export and you earn dollars, then you are able to bridge uh, yes. the, the, gap. the gap. But again, there are a lot of issues with our um, with our export again, mm. traceability, uh, quality, and all these ones. But again, all these things are possible. Uh, yeah, talking about possible. things like organic production, it's just for you to be, just be disciplined, just, just to the right thing. And before yeah. you know, because Europe is looking. Uh, the, the issue with, uh, with Russia and Ukraine. And so let's, let's move now 
Uh, we believe the lessons have been learned for businesses. You need to think more of local, think more of export, think more of um, taking measures to reduce uh, un un unwarranted expenses and uh, be much more dense in your finances. So let's talk about the issue of this banditry. You know, very recently, uh, about a week or two ago, uh, we had uh, uh, a threat from some group of persons that are coming to kidnap our president. <laughs> that's, that's sad. Mm. That is sad. That is shameful. And it, it didn't just end there. I was told that Mr. President didn't even know. Yes. By the same person that they, went to, they were threatening to kidnap the that is uh, that's talking about uh, governor Erufai. i mean for a bandit to come out on video and say look we're going to kidnap your your president and again uh, one of the one of the elites mentioned that look it is possible that they may they may kidnap um, our president then the implication of that okay if your, your president becomes kidnapped what happens to you? <laughs> you know, I, I think, uh, you know, as, as, as we have it on this program, we, we like to do a quality analysis of issues um, to pinpoint, um, you know, the factors, the triggering factors, the push and pull factors that can uh, culminate into a particular event or activity. Can we look at this threat and try to extrapolate the factors to see whether it is actually possible. <laughs> well, I was at the villa recently, mm. and um, I mean, I don't know the technology that they are using. I mean, I uh, I drove in and I had a field day uh, moving around because I didn't know where I was going. Uh, at a point, I was using Google Map, and Google Map, you know, we fail you, especially with sometimes. Uh, so uh, I drove. I was driving. I was trying to locate a particular office. I mean, from the gate, I just mentioned that, look, I didn't to go to an office. No, no further question was asked of me. But I know that I missed my route several times inside. And the there was no interrogation was from no, anyone. Uh, I expected that, look, if you are driving in and you, you turn on several occasions, mm. there should be an alarm that will be triggered. Okay, so uh, I want to pray. I want to pray that it's not because again, uh, during the last administration, we're hearing that uh, the, the the Boko Haram particularly were, they were hosting their flag in in, in, local, in, government. in local governments. I just returned back from uh, Niger State uh, right now. I went as far as Mokwa, and the driver who drove me was an internal person in Niger State, and he showed me a road. He said this road leads to Kutumbura, and uh, Kutumbura is the home. Uh, uh, home state or uh, home village of the sitting governor, mm. and he told me that look, you cannot go to Kotobara. Wow, he told me that you cannot go to Kotobara. I was just joking with him. I said, Let us pass through that road. He said, Okay, you are on your own. Okay, that's the sitting governor of Niger State. He cannot go to his hometown as I'm talking to you now. Okay, so the implication is, 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 is ripe and is fearful because again. If, for, God forbid, mm. it happens, that means they are going to host their flag. You know, I, I, I <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. You know, you know to, to corroborate what you just said, I have a friend that works in, in the village. And just yesterday night, okay. he visited me and we were also having a conversation around these uh, security issues. He told me face to face, he said, my brother, I can tell you that there is no security in, uh, in Asurok. I mean, this is somebody that works in that place. <laughs> he said, he said, he sometimes, you know, the way people enter into the villa and they come out, and come out <laughs> that from time to time he queries it as an individual. Mm. That for goodness it is the seat of the government. Of government. Mm. I remember he does this of a bachelor. <laughs> I mean, a colleague of mine was, I think I was serving at, at that time, a colleague of mine you know, from Kano came to Abuja, you know, I mean, the villa was a highly restricted area, so yes. he missed his way, and they stopped him. They had to get some... Uh, clearance. Yes, not clearance, they had to get some experts, I don't want to mention the country they are from, mm. to look into their eyes to read their intention. 
And at the end of the day, they discovered that, look, these guys were innocent. They had to let them go. So, but now you can drive into the villa. I mean, there was an attack on the villa, have you forgotten? And it was now said that it was arm robbery. Mm. So it was mentioned that uh, it was arm robbery trying to gain entr entrance to the seats. I mean, like the White House, you know, <laughs> of Nigeria. So uh, that's where we are. And um, it's, it's a very serious, uh, a very, very, very serious, serious matter. Uh, I mean, I, there was a reported case in uh, one of the captains that was killed in uh, Buari. Yes. Okay, so that brigade was set up, I think, to, to actually try to secure Abuja. I remember when, uh, when, um, when they were doing bomb blasts in Abuja at oh. that time, at the point that uh, the last of Joe was about to exit, they had to set up that brigade specifically to protect the villa. And here we are, they went to uh, law school on a surveillance mission and the captain was killed. If you know the costs and implication of, 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 of a captain. Getting an army to a captain yeah. level. I mean, I mean captain we had some things, if, things that we had to, I mean, uh, do with the military at a point in time. And, you know, one Air Force uh, officer was telling us, look, that Nigeria has spent about 200 million in training him. He was, he was very, he was very, very uh, uh, boastful to say, look, this is how much Nigeria has spent on me. And today, um, I was looking at an analysis this morning, that an average of 37 persons dies every day from a result of a banditry and uh, Boko Haram activities. About 37 persons on a daily basis dies. So, and I don't know when and how this thing is going to, is going to stop. Now, let's link this thing, because for businesses that are watching uh, us today, they are all linked, sir. Whether it is the dollar uh, inability of our central bank of uh, Nigeria, the central bank of Nigeria, or the presidency to, I mean, the central bank to, to be able to uh, manage the dollar, or the presidency to be able to secure the country, they are all linked. And for me, it is all about efficiency in decision-making process. Because, let me give you an example, sir. The, do, the major issue that we are seeing is that we are not producing. That is number one. The number two is um, round tripping and all that. There are simple efficiency <laughs> mechanisms yeah. that you can use to uh, manage these yeah. processes. Maybe also, also, maybe you talk about accountability also. Accountability yeah. as well. Then you come to even this issue of banditry. Mm. It's also the issue of efficiency. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a threat was made or an attack was was made and people died there is supposed to be a consequence <laughs> for people that were supposed to do yeah. that job that yeah. was supposed to protect that place that you know such attack uh, was, uh, was look, made. look at the attack on the kujie prison yes i mean these people move on bike in numbers and we have checkpoints across this nation and they even had a feed day, two to three hours. Attacking the prison. Okay. And they left. And none, none of them was... There was no casualty. No casualty. So, so I think it's a deliberate <laughs> um, state that we are in now. I don't think it's a matter of uh, uh, unforeseen circumstances. It's, it's, a, it's a work that was premeditated and deliberate to get us to this point. So it's, uh, it's very unfortunate and, uh, and you know when I say we'll pray <laughs> yeah so um, I, I would like us to now look at um, the you know recently the uh, the Minister for Aviation Hedi Sirika who has been on uh, uh, a wool for some time now because <laughs> uh, we've not been hearing from him w with the Nigerian Airways <laughs> yes with the Nigerian Airways mm -hmm. and just uh, very recently last week or there about he announced that uh, the Nigerian Airways will uh, we, we, we start off with, uh, with, with borrowed aircraft with borrowed aircraft I, I don't know so mm -hmm. business-wise let's let's look at it in terms of uh, business uh, uh, what is the implication of you know starting off a business of of that magnitude with uh, borrowed aircraft? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, something kept um, running across my mind. Mm. Uh, we're told that um, aero contractor 
has seized operations. I we have told that Dana airline has been suspended. Has been suspended. So mm. the question that bothers my mind: What happens to those fleet of aircraft? Okay. So someone was of the opinion that you know why can't we be having major an acquisition, which is one of those things that I know that you mm. you believe so much. Yeah. Uh, you believe so much in uh, talking about major an acquisition. Then somebody even went very very uh very very innovative to say look why can't you just buy uh, tickets mm. with no uh, airline in mind so when you get to the airport whichever f um, airline is on ground so you can fly okay so in that case uh, just like central bank is like a clearing house for all the commercial banks so you have a body that is like a clearing house. Mm. So if you have that, the issue of people uh, delay flights, okay, which is very common. I mean, you cannot, if you have an appointment today, I will advise you to fly yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's a scenario. Mm. I, I mean, we are so, we are so guilty of uh, delayed flight, cancel flight without apology. No announcement, without, no uh, apology. Without all those things. So, uh, right now, I think it's about talking about innovation. Mm -hmm. We must be critical with innovation. And that's why the, the minister must have to put on his thinking cap. Uh, I don't know where he got those borrowed uh, this thing. I think he just uh, desperate to make sure that uh, that airline takes off. But again, uh, the implication, as you have asked, uh, airline is not uh, is not is not a car running on the ground. Yes. Uh, so, when you have to borrow or you have to lease, you must make sure that all the rules and regulations are followed, because again, uh, Nigerian Airways. We know of the studio of Nigerian Airways in mm. those days. Okay, where government officials fly for free, and of course, even though we never had any of those aircraft uh, falling uh, out of the sky, uh, out of the sky, but again, what happened on the long run? We didn't have an aircraft to, to fly. Just as we have predicted that um, rice would get to fifty thousand, mm. I tell you that local flights would get to hundred thousand. No, it's not that hundred thousand. <laughs> so, so it's not my prediction. It's not my <laughs> <laughs> it's not my prediction. It's already at hundred thousand. I I came back from you you were you are where now? I yes. came back from Bayesa okay. from Yenagua. Eighty thousand. That was about two three weeks ago. Eighty yeah. thousand. my one of my uh, one of my siblings, mm. you know, was on my neck. Look, I'm coming from Lagos. Buy my ticket. Buy my ticket. <laughs> you know, as I return my check, it was it was sixty thousand. Okay, so the following day, you know, the young man kept calling me saying. Have you bought the ticket? <laughs> Only for me to check again. Just less than uh, five Two hours. No, six hours. The flight moved to sixty-five, and today that flight, just as I mentioned, is about eighty thousand. Yes. <laughs> so, so of course, with the with the program we are, we are doing in you that mm. we had a handshake with uh, 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 no Ibom. No okay, Ibom. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And I can tell that those rates that they give us are no longer... It's no longer possible. <laughs> They're no longer tenable. So I don't know where we are going. So, I mean, uh, maybe people like Zoom will actually come to reap from this now. Because, again, if you look at the cost... I mean, somebody wanted to go to Kaduna. Mm. A consultant like, like us wanted to go to Kaduna from Abuja. Mm. You know what he told me? He flew to Lagos <laughs> from Abuja. Then from Lagos, he flew to Kaduna. <laughs> because he can't afford to take the road no, he or the said, train. No, you know what he told me? He said, look, Godfrey, at the end of the day, I spent about 300000 He said, but if they kidnap me... <laughs> 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 and uh, one of our friends also from Kaduna, he, he told me that any time he wants to come to Abuja from Kaduna, a distance that is less than two hours, mm -hmm. he will go to Kano first. And from Kano, he will now fly to Abuja and same way back. So you can see that we're losing money. Okay, we're losing money, we're losing time. The risk is on the increase. And you talked about productivity, sir. <laughs> These are all parts of productivity. <laughs> yes. So, so when you don't have control of mm. you know your time, you don't have control of your time, it 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 affects you know your yeah, ability. I, I, to I, so that's why I said, look, uh, you know, COVID nineteen 
Africa forced us to go virtual. Mm. I think so now. <laughs> cost now we forced Nigeria to go virtual. Because I just returned from Niger State where I went to go and do a survey. And again, with uh, Kobo Collect, with uh, Google Form, I would have easily be able to do that survey. Mm. But the people are insisting that, look, they want to see me face to face. And at the end of the day, we still went there and still use the same uh, method. Uh, yeah, Kobo Collect to collect the information. So, it may, it may, uh, it's, um, this is trying to teach us uh, another way to be able to relate. To, to adopt uh, more of technology. More, uh, yeah. Mm, so moving because, forward. Because there's nothing now that you cannot do with technology okay because the meeting you are going to lagos to go and have mm. you can connect your your, your partners or uh, yes and have that yes. uh, seamless meeting do the argument the only thing that you can't slap yourself <laughs> if, if you, <laughs> <laughs> you know but, but again let's uh, look at because we we want to see that in the course of these conversations um businesses will also begin to see the need to um, look deep again into their business models you know the aviation minister so far has adopted this model of this but my question and my concern is how is that going to be profitable knowing that this is an airline till now we have not have information about what is the unique setting point for okay. this airline unlike you know, let's do a case study of Glow. When Glow could not launch their service uh, in the time of uh, uh, Pasekombeli, yes, on um, Pasekombeli, when, when they were when they were yet to launch, okay, okay, MTN it has was, already launched. Was holding sway, you know. So MTN was holding sway. Glow was still trying to perfect their processes and all that, their papers and all that, their license and all that. Glow knew that the competition has started. Okay. And they invested heavily into campaign, into advertisement, telling Nigerians why they should wait for Globacom. And they actually came and uh, they, they changed the dynamics. Yes. They, they started by using sentiment, you know, local sentiment. Yeah. They were using uh, per billing promises, per second. Per, per, per second billing promises, you know. To, to so, so what was Nigeria Airways coming? What uh, are they coming with? Uh, yeah. Now we don't. Nigerians don't have any information of what they are coming with, and the next, so by implication, you know, you were talking about having, you know, a, like a clearinghouse where you just buy a ticket, and you know, you you, you go to the airport and you are you are fixed, you know, you are boarded into an available uh, aircraft. Aircraft. Now, if that is a campaign that they are bringing to us yeah. that don't worry nigerian airways is going to have this service for you so go and register you know um for for for, for our services or nigerian airways is is going to you know give you a, a special kind of treatment you know go and register for service so that at the end of the day we now see that okay they have some number of passengers you know customers that have already registered to utilize the airways i mean the nigerian airway services mm -hmm. so that that can give you an idea that okay we have 100 you know mm -hmm. potential customers uh, I, I think nigerian airway is just um, a name saving a face saving uh, uh, uh like the minister came and um, made a promise that nigerian airway will fly again mm. so i think it's just a face saving if you ask me because again well, or maybe one of the problems also trying to to solve is that we don't have a national carrier many countries don't have a national yes, carrier so national carrier has a lot of implication for a big country as big as nigeria so you end up into you end up flying into nations that you didn't plan to fly into okay if for example you have to board a turkish airline and route um, mm. us you must have to go to istanbul yes whether you like it or not I mean, there are two um, African airlines really that are holding sway. Talking about Ethiopian, Kenya. Ethiopian airline and, and Kenya airline. But again, if airpiece is living up to expectation, why can't we adopt an airpiece as a national as, as a national carrier? Because the man has shown that he's able to is able to do business, which is which is critical. I mean, in those days, Aero Contractor was that airline in the order of airpiece today. Mm. But for an airline as big as Aero Contractor to come down is worrisome for me. And again, 
if you look at uh, uh, Oyema and Allen, sometimes, you know, the man is in, is deeply troubled. He's deeply troubled because the aviation fuel, mm. okay, that's the same fuel that uh, uh, Air Nigeria will take. That's the same um, fear that um, Air Peace will, will, will take. Okay, so for me, I think... Uh, the minister is just trying to uh, to save his face, but again, while trying to save his face, let him make sure that he's not putting people's life in danger, uh, at risk. Beyond putting people's life at risk, uh, we we all know we know that um, at least on paper, and uh, we are seeing it because recently the NCA, the Nigerian Civil Aviation uh, Agency, uh, slammed the hammer on Dana, and uh, so we are made to believe that the NCA is working at least to yeah. an extent uh, because i think what resulted in that suspense uh, suspension of a uh, dana license dana's license was the emergency landing that they have yeah, they had, had yeah. you know several times and all that we resulted in them knowing that perhaps they have not done their due uh, maintenance and all that let's agree that nigerian airways might not drop off the sky but i want us to look at it from economic point of view from business point of view um you know, for a business that you are starting off, you know, with, building, with, with lease aircraft. With that, lease aircraft. That's your worry. That is my concern. Okay. Are there no other alternatives, no other options? You talked about major and acquisition. So all the money that you are investing, for instance, in securing this lease, because they must have spent so much money. Boeing or Airbus is not going to release their vehicle, I mean their their aircraft without them making certain deposits, paying certain amount of money. Yeah, it, it, I mean, like, I, I also tell you that um, uh, the Nigerian um, airspace mm. is, is viable. Yes. Uh, and the passengers are waiting for, because again, if two airlines has gone under now, mm. then uh, I was discussing with a friend, and I asked him today, how many uh, private airlines, do we, I mean, how many airlines do we have in Nigeria? He mentioned that we have four and a half. <laughs> 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 so, so, so maybe uh, with them coming on board, I mean, you could you, you, you could still see that uh, the flights are not enough. Yeah, they, the they, flights are we, not enough. So if if they come on board with least that that would be from the easiest way for them to come into the market. Because for you to buy a single aircraft now, you know how much um, uh, that will cost. And that's also appreciating for coming out clean. Mm. You know, if I told you that, okay, we bought or, you know, the usual government uh, 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 lies. So I believe that if efficiently uh, managed, just as you have mentioned, I believe that the sky is wide enough for two aircraft to, to, to fly without them clashing. Yeah, but I was looking at it from the point of view that why couldn't they enter a major agreement or acquisition agreement with Eric, Eric. for instance? Okay. Okay. Eric have some aircraft. So in, instead of spending that money to lease the, an aircraft, the, the, don't forget that Eric himself is under uh, what do they call it again? They borrowed so much and they couldn't pay, so yeah. they are under. Uh, they have been acquired by mm. by Amcom. Amcom. Yes. Okay. So so which which is a good deal? Mm. Amcom is not an airline management uh, organization. Amcom. I think they set up a private airline. One of the things that they could look at, uh, the major and acquisition is something that is ripe now. It's ripe. Uh, something that they, they should... Um, Partnership should, is mm, ripe. Yeah. So these are models I was hoping that uh, the aviation minister should be able to look into. Because frankly, yes, we don't know the numbers that is out there, but from a vantage point of you know, managing businesses and consulting for businesses, um, lease is not the best option, option. for Nigerian Airways, mm -hmm. as we speak. So, so let's look at uh, a recent appointment. Um, at least for the first time, uh, somebody in the hierarchy uh, has been able to step up. Talking about Justice um, Ariwola mm. uh, uh, as the Chief Justice of uh, Nigeria. I remember that the Chief Justice himself had to resign. Yes. when there was pressure on him for him to do that. I mean, what for, did he say twice? For a long time, mm. nobody uh, <laughs> resigns in Nigeria. So uh, for him to even re resign, I mean, it's, it's commendable. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, uh, Mr. President um, was able to appoint somebody who was next on, on the line. So I don't know what you have to say about that. Yeah, if uh, we can replicate this kind of uh, scenario, 
you know in every other aspect of our our national lives it, it's it's something that will bring us out from you know the woods as we are today because um for the newly appointed justice i believe that uh, he's competent uh, that was why he was second in line and um, you know he, he, he should be able given all the support that he requires that he needs he should be able to uh, do what is needful you know if, if, if you if you put this side by side with what has been happening in the in the security architecture for instance okay where we have a an IG of police retiring for instance or a chief of army staff retiring for instance and you have to keep him you have to beyond keeping him you have to retire you know uh, first second to the third keda of people in line just to get somebody just to get somebody you know to come and yeah. uh, find out is the nation that loses at the end of the day is the nation that loses they, they lose the, the experience that they have acquired, yes. the money that you have spent so much on them. I mean, look at the implication also, what happened at the Accountant General's office. Mm. The man who was due for, for retirement, and the man I suspected bribed his way, and you know, now enter into the problem proper. Okay, so that's where we are. So people should be able to follow hierarchy today, yes. so that you put the right people, uh, talking about putting uh, uh, what's it called now? The right peg in the, in the, in the right the, hole. The, the round uh, peg in the, in the round mm. uh, in the right, round hole. So uh, yeah, we commend Mr. President for that for being able to appoint um, Justice Ariwola. Okay, so another appointment was made again of Joe Ohiani at the Infrastructure Regulatory uh, Co Commission. Uh, commission. Mm. Okay, so that was another one again. He's also a technocrat. Okay, so let's see. Uh, what do you think all these people will bring on board or what do you think they will be able to do? You know, the, the interesting thing about uh, Mr. President's appointment so far is not that uh, he doesn't appoint competent people. Okay. okay? Um, the issue has been that he, he doesn't balance his appointments, you know, considering the ethnic nationalities that make up the country and the sensitivities of Nigerians especially at this point in time that has been one of the major criticism of of Mr. President you know you know I, I did some recent work in anti-corruption recently mm. and you know people don't just think that it's only about stealing uh, money physically yes or diverting money that is corruption mm. nepotism is one major yes uh, form of corruption yes and it's, it's even stated in the federal character yeah. So when, when you are not fair in, in the appointment, you mm. appoint uh, people from only a certain uh, part, part of, of the country. country. So uh, that other should be taken care of. We're, we're hoping that the next government uh, will be able to take care of that. Because this, this scenario we are now is a very interesting scenario where a sitting government has completed uh, his tenure. Yes. And we're looking at a situation where uh, probably there might be uh, something unique happening this time around, just like uh, uh, APC were, were able to defeat PDP at that time. Mm. So this scenario is uh, is becoming very interesting. It's becoming mm. very very interesting, mm. and uh, uh, these appointments are very uh, credible appointments, I, I, I should say, uh, because these persons are coming with a lot of experience uh, in the area that have been appointed. Uh, so I wish the president had started this practice earlier in the day, you know, of, of his administration. And I don't think we'll be where we are today. You know, so why we commend Mr. President on this appointment? I want to call on these persons to also see Nigeria as Nigeria. Um, they should treat Nigerians as Nigerians. Uh, they should dispense justice in terms of the chief judge that has been appointed. Uh, and for the Infrastructure Regulatory Commission, I think there is no better time for us to begin to even look at that commission, you know, uh, as, as at today, because uh, the infrastructure in this country is so dilapidated. You know, you talk about business, uh, the problem that businesses are also facing today is about infrastructure, whether it is power, whether it is road, whether it is even the train uh, services, it's all about infrastructure. Uh, I think one of the infrastructure that is very, very critical now, and I need you to talk about that, is the CCTV. Yes. Okay, uh, I remember the incident that happened in a war mm. where people enter the church and uh, kill over 40 persons. Mm. And the governor made 
a statement that uh, that right now every uh, every building should have CCTV camera. CCTV camera. I mean, it was just a mere statement. What do you think? You know, sometimes, sometimes, and this is, you know, as real as it can get. You know, sometimes I wonder whether these leaders that we have, they are still very patriotic, and being very patriotic, whether they are still very, very humane, you know, to, to know what to do and to at least move forward. You know, with every form of the state uh, paraphernalia, to see that those things are being done, especially those things that affect the common people, which for me now is the issue of security. Now, how can we be in this state of insecurity till now, and there is no, there is no very clear cut approach, no clear cut agenda, no clear cut activity that is geared at ensuring that there is CCTV camera across, uh, I mean across the, the country. The, the, the use of CCTV, I mean, it's something that should be very, very paramount now. Uh, because one of those things you notice, I mean, we are quick to say that, look, even in America, there is a, there is, uh, most times you have shootout. Yes. But what I want to quick to our notice is that anytime you have those shootout, the people don't go without being Unpunished. caught. Unpunished. Yeah, they don't go without being caught. Yes. Okay? I mean, the last uh, shootout uh, that happened, I mean, there was a detailed CCTV analysis mm. to the point where they have had to blame the police to look. We were watching the you. The case is still ongoing. Yes. Right? You, 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 you waited for, for so, so period of time for people to be killed. Mm. So this is CCTV in, in display. In display now. Okay? So how can we really get CCTV across Nigeria? It's not magic. <laughs> you know, this is why mm. it's so I, I, you annoying. Know, Mr. President mentioned then that he was going to deploy CCTV on the highway. <laughs> they have not look at even uh, the FCT. <laughs> look at the the three arms zone. Uh -huh. How many CCTV cameras are there? <laughs> look at the Eagle Square. Uh -huh. This the National Secretariat, right. the Federal Secretariat. <laughs> How many CCTV cameras mm. are there? Now somebody was uh, talking with me the other day. A friend of mine who owns uh, uh, a school, you know, he was telling me, sir, Mr. Sai, um, just recently that because of the security issues and when the government made that announcement that schools should close and all that, he said he had to quickly call for a CCTV camera uh, engineer to install CCTV camera in his school. And he said, my brother, do you know that we installed over 22 CCTV cameras in that school? Covering every nook and cranny of the school premises. Yeah. But do you know that I didn't spend up to 1.5 million naira, Which is very good. And it, they should be able to set up a control room where they can monitor. Yes. Uh, and again, why can't we even use CCTV? Uh, Mr. President is talking about creating 100 uh, uh, million jobs. Mm. From CCTV alone, we can create... You can create at least hundreds of jobs. <laughs> hundreds of as jobs. As it is now, you... You, you say, look, every public building mm. must have CCTV camera. Yes. So, engineers get trained immediately. You know, engineers are quite uh, very... They have individuals that are very, very proactive. That. So, yes. you do that, and again, you can connect all these things to cloud. And from anywhere in the world, you can view. You can view. So, make a law or an, an, an administrative uh, policy. Uh, policy immediately to say, look, all public, an executive order. Yeah, all public and private building must have um, CCTV camera. And that if any incident happen around your property, we will demand for the, you are, you are the, 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 the criminal. <laughs> so, uh, if you do that, if that policy alone will create job. All those our engineer, young young uh, uh, technicians, young and technicians, engineers. they will they will swing in place immediately. And we now see not just deploying those CCTV. How do we now connect them? Or so that you know across Nigeria, we now be from anywhere you will be able to have access to uh, all those things. So that is why for me it's it's really painful that we are see where we are. Because okay, let, let me let me give you an example. Uh, somebody was telling me that uh, in South Africa, somebody shared a message with me. In South Africa, South Africa is about 50 million people. And uh, that's about the quarter of our, of, of our population. population yeah. And they are generating over 40,000 megawatts of power. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, Peter Obi had to go to Egypt. Egypt. Now, that is not where the story ends. Uh, now, recently, about a month or two ago, South Africa experienced some uh, power shortage. And guess what? The president declared emergency <laughs> on the power sector. Wow. I know today they, they tell you that look, if you want uh, some Nigerians mm. who were, uh, they immigrated into the US uh, illegally. Mm. So there was now a consultant who said, look, some Nigerians just came into the US. How do we fish them out? He said, it's very simple. Mm. Just switch off the national grid <laughs> and bring it back. You hear Nigeria will say, up there, far. <laughs> You see that our uh, problem has become endemic. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's appalling. Uh, they, now the water level is up, mm. they are generating, but distribution is a problem. Mm. So, well, I mean, <laughs> they, they are not telling us that uh, the discos or the genkos or whatever calls that they call them, mm -hmm. they don't have the requisite investment. I said, okay, is that a problem? Mm. If you sold something, Perhaps you must have an agreement before selling off these things. They are going to make certain investment as you are you are buying off this thing. And the person is not making that investment. You give the person a timeline. If you are unable to make this investment, your initial investment, your initial investment is forfeited. Mm. Or it shall be not be construed as mm. a certain percentage of the total uh, of the asset. So they will wake up. And they wake up. Mm. Now, if they fail to do that, you give it to other people that are ready with the investment. So, all these things too difficult. So somebody to will do. say, now look at Palace. Who did this to us? <laughs> who did, what did we do wrong? <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you look at the issue of the insecurity now, Sam. There is no premeditated agenda or plan to say, okay, let us arrest this situation. You are not seeing any issue of. Um, emergency action. You're not seeing any issue of emergency structure being put in place. You mentioned, excuse me, you mentioned that during the end of the last administration, because they had to set up that uh, brigade, of, brigade God. of God. Now, what has this administration set up in reaction to the current crisis that we are facing? What, mm. what, what are the, you know, the emergency solution that they are proffering? To, to, to bring all these things into uh, an end. So, and that's why I, I, I kind of try to conclude that it's like they have this agenda to bring us to this level. <laughs> uh, but I want to encourage them, whatever yeah, they are doing. I, I, think the, I think the question of being overwhelmed, because again, like as I said, look, for you to get um, the right person now, it must be with the person with the right thinking cap. Mm. Okay, because again, the problem in Nigeria now, uh, you have people who cannot solve their family problem, they now want to be a Nigerian president. president. Uh, so, uh, let me know, you know, today I'm just using our local parlance. Mm. Let's not enter another one chance again. God <laughs> <laughs> will not allow us to enter one chance. So, as we wrap up, let's quickly, we're having our event coming up in Uyo. Um, let's uh, look at the Oil and Gas Stakeholders Festival. Uh, as it has to do with, you know, the economy as well. Um, what what role um, is this festival going to play? You know, this oil and gas festival coming up in Rio uh, for for this year in August 25th, uh, 2022. Uh, do you think it's going to have any significant contribution? You know, to changing the the dynamics, dynamics of uh, our inability to to produce our inability to also bring about development uh, in the communities, our inability to uh, at least meet our quota in the international market. Yeah, the Oil and Gas Stakeholder Festival uh, is a seminar type uh, kind of festival that uh, we plan for August. And um, you see that there are quite a number of uh, seminars, you know, conferences that have happened, but this one is a bit different in the sense that, look, we're not going to host an oil and gas festival in Abuja. Mm. We're moving to Uyo, where the center of action of oil and gas activity uh, is coming up. And you know, um, the oil and gas has a lot of issues. And today, 
uh, a, a leg of our economy rests on the oil and gas. Uh, talking about the fact that the, the diesel uh, just went up all overnight. Uh, talking about the fact that uh, right now we're talking about subsidy remover. Uh, talking about the fact that, look, the NNPC is now a limited liability yes. company. Okay, so these are <coughs> very critical issues. People are still very confused mm. as to what difference will it make with an NNPC becoming uh, a, limited a limited liability, liability company. company. Okay, so one of the issues that people have not been able to address is the fact that, look, NNPC is a, a limited liability company, but it's still largely owned by the, the same government. So we must get to the point where government must begin to see how they can divest for the meaningful impact. So those are the things that we're going to be discussing um, at that uh, three days event. And most importantly, uh, first and second day, we'll do the normal exhibition, we'll do the talk talk. But critically, we are looking at the, uh, the last day, which is 27, which is the, the uh, oil and gas uh, day. Uh, petroleum, World Petroleum Day, mm. uh, we want to talk to about 200 women. Okay, and we're getting a technocrat to be able to come to talk to these women on how to invest in oil and gas. And incidentally, I believe so much in women uh, because, again, uh, they are managers by excellence, mm -hmm. you know, with the little resources, especially now that we're having issues in Nigeria. I mean, uh, you, if you discover what you still give to your wife, it's still the same amount of money. Despite the fact that the price has, has doubled, she kept complaining and she's managing. Mm. So I think that uh, for every uh, woman listening to me right now, the place you must be in is Uyo in August from 25, 26 to 27. Uh, we're going to be getting a strong technocrat to talk to you on how to invest in oil and gas. Oh, and we use the opportunity to call on the government of Aquaibon State uh, to please partner with us. Okay, we are bringing something meaningful. Over a thousand person will be landing in Uyo uh, this August just for this purpose. And again, in talking about tourism, I mm -hmm. want to see how Ibon Icon Resort uh, will be busy again. So uh, we want the Aquaibon State Government to please uh, partner with us on this on this on this front because you are the host uh, community. Uh, last week, uh, previously on the twentieth, we were in uh, Bayesa and uh, to be able to do the flag off of the of the torchlight flame yeah uh, which is very significant to this uh, event mm. so uh the oil and gas is something that uh, you know the world is going to be uh, playing a very prominent role in, at that event so yeah. uh, what what do you have to say to the people again yeah so i think uh, it's, it's going to be an awesome time uh in uyo uh we want you to join us in addition to you know having conversations around uh, the NNPC uh, Nigerian Limited uh, having the training for women uh, to to you know move into the oil and gas sector and and uh, even the energy transition. Yes, you know I, I'm 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 really uh, curious as to you know like you just mentioned transition. Some other companies are selling off. Some are moving out. You know I want to I want to see. You know, what has been the impact because you know when you when you talk about oil and, and, and gas in Nigeria most times most people will just you know give you the wave of hand that it has rather been a cost you know but I know that there are some oil companies in Nigeria uh, that have actually made an impact in terms of community development so I, I want us to also change that narrative yes it has not been gloom and doom there are some benefits that communities are yeah, derived yeah. Uh, if, from if, if um, NFC Limited, if they're able to transit to a true private sector company, mm. uh, like I hear now that um, they are uh, NMPC, uh, sorry, um, the refinery in Wari and the one in Portacourt will soon start production. Okay. Okay. And of course, again, if Dangote joins them again, then uh, we'll now be able to produce, uh, I mean, refine locally. Mm. <coughs> and the application of refining locally <laughs> is the fact that the other byproducts, mm. talking about the diesel, talking about the gas that we are we're flaring, we'll now be able to harness them uh, locally to make all these things available to us uh, uh, for production. So, energy transition, 
uh, people are talking about alternative um, to, uh, to, to oil and gas. Uh, 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 looking at uh, alternative now, which is also something that is very uh, uh, critical and, and gear. I mean, uh, in my own house now, I survive on on daytime with on solar, mm. uh, so which helped me to reduce uh, my bill drastically. So uh, people are talking about inverters now. People are talking about wind uh, energy. So all these things. But I must tell you that if we don't go local, okay, as in terms of producing all these things by ourselves, okay, we may not be able to compete uh, going forward. Yeah. Uh, so as we wrap up, um, I understand that uh, the Minister of uh, Petroleum, the Minister of State, because I know the, the Chief Minister of Petroleum is the President. Yeah. So but the Minister of State, State has actually... Yeah, we'll be, we'll be seeing him on uh, the 16th okay. uh, to actually rob mines uh, with him. Uh, yeah, I think he's been participating in most of this uh, activity. Uh, like I said, the problem the government is having is that they, they, they didn't they didn't quite appreciate the the volume of problem that we're having. So I think they became overwhelmed uh, along the line. So uh, whoever is going to succeed uh, should know that. Look, Mr. President says he wants to run back to Casina. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let them be careful so that they don't be, they don't even run earlier than, uh, <laughs> than, uh, than they were expected to run. <laughs> because the, the problem in Nigeria is that you know, uh, if you get to a point, they will beg people for leadership. Mm. Because when we are able to checkmate people from stealing, okay, we were able to stop people from doing the wrong thing. It, it to get to a point where the resources will actually dry, dry down, mm. and people will now have to be technocrats that you know are able to bring stone out and bring water out of the rock. Mm. That would be the people that would actually be our leaders. Thank you very much. On that note, we want to uh, once again celebrate you for you know always checking up on the platform, and uh, we want to also trust that you are taking the lessons that uh, are out there that are coming out from the guests that were you know bringing on the platform that is the essence of this program and help you to also understand the dynamics of how business is moving where business is moving to how the economy is growing or being disrupted by by businesses uh, so that we can learn the lessons yeah as a ceo uh with the ceo g connect we talk about topical issue as it has to relate with enterprise so if you're a ceo and you feel that you have a solution to sell to other ceos man why not reach out to us on our platform we will be glad to host you uh, to a meaningful session we believe that nigeria very soon will be better and indeed you know the transformation of the world will start from nigeria and you as a ceo may be the person to do that transformation thank you very much see you in the next edition <music>